Blockchain really is a distributed database um, that stores transactions in encrypted blocks that are linked together chronologically. And it's this uh, distributed nature, the decentralized nature, and the immutable uh, aspects of it that we think uh, can really position a fundamental change in how we work with and integrate and really use data. Uh, which is why some people really consider it to be a foundational technology uh, that really has the potential to not only transform how governments operate, but far-reaching implications uh, across various industries and really society as a whole. And uh, blockchain is one of the five technologies that GIO feels is going to significantly impact government and society. Uh, blockchain along with artificial intelligence, robotics, uh, quantum computing, and I'm forgetting the last one, uh, we feel has got a huge potential to impact of how government does its own business, how it delivers services, and it's going to have an impact on society. However, if you look at our report, there's a big caveat in it. And this goes back to something you just mentioned, Ishan. It's an emerging technology. There's still a great deal of unknown of how this technology can be used in different environment. GIO feels that there has to be a fair amount of research and development in this area of how blockchain, along with the other emerging technologies, can be leveraged and used by government. Uh, the idea is that with R&D uh, to provide some sort of a experimental sandbox, some of the stuff that Craig is doing, which is going to really spur um, additional development and more widespread application within the government itself. And this is one of the interesting things for me, and, and Asif could probably tell you much more about this. Sometimes efficiency and internal controls sort of like teeter. The higher internal controls, less efficiency. But this is one of those solutions we, where we actually improved efficiency and internal controls at the same time, which is kind of an interesting finding for us. And, and the stronger controls really went around, well, we had people going around doing all this stuff. Now we had the software doing it. And if you program the software correctly, it's, it's not only much more efficient, but it's doing a much better job and it reduces the error rate as well. There are three main areas we feel are very important as consideration before jumping into blockchain or when you're considering uh, adopting blockchain. Uh, one of the key ones, and shouldn't really come as a surprise, is that it, there has to be a very robust risk management process around adoption of blockchain. Uh, blockchain, by definition, is a very custom, well, blockchain, you may or may not know, is very customizable and, 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 and a very versatile technology. So uh, it has to be very clearly thought through where the needs are uh, within your environment before adopting blockchain. I mean, we still find people are interested in, interested in blockchain just because there's buzzword, but then soon they realize that there's much more to blockchain than just what blockchain can offer to a different industry. But having said that, through more experimentation, through more proof of concepts, I think word is going to get out as to how people can adopt blockchain within their own, own environment. So governance is very important to make sure that when in agencies are adopting blo blockchain, it's thoroughly vetted that right. you know what you're getting yourselves in. Uh, the other one is the change management aspect of it. Because like Craig was saying, blockchain is supposed to be more efficient, it's supposed to make the process more streamlined, and it's going to get rid of redundancies. So it's very important to really clearly map out the process that is going to be replacing and what the redundancies are. As you can see, people's roles are going to change, people's roles are going to shift. So it's going to be very important that change management is a part of that rollout, that change management has been thought how that is going to impact when you're implementing in blockchain. So obviously scale helps. If you're going to start small, then you can do a small proof of concept, have successes in a small area before you begin to roll out though. Um, along with uh, change management comes training. Blockchain is, um, requires um, hands-on involvement. I mean, it's, it's, it's moving, it's dynamic. Um, 
piece of technology where you really have to pay attention to what's happening because you, otherwise you'll begin to impact the efficiency of the network itself. So it's very important that people are trained how to use blockchain in their specific environment, what their roles are. Then another important element to consider before implementing blockchain is different type of protocols. So in other words, what the policy and procedures are going to be. Policy and procedures are more, most likely going to change in a blockchain environment because you are altering the way you're doing business with either your trading partners or you're doing business internally. So the older policy and procedures are not going to apply. There's going to be new protocol which is going to be called for within a blockchain environment. Pretty simply, I mean, like, who, uh, how are they going to resolve differences between the different network partners? Uh, I mean, how are they going to resolve any other that issue comes up as far as efficiency goes? Then again, um, I am an accountant, I'm an auditor. Internal controls are going to be very important. Information security are going to be very important. Blockchain is supposed to be very robust as far as technology is concerned. Information is sealed into the block. But then again, if you're looking at the broader network, there are many different blocks and there have been instances in the crypto cryptocurrency world, maybe that's an example, lessons learned, that where uh, there has been corruption of the network and they have been, uh, been able to perpetuate denial of services. Though the information within the block may, be, uh, may have maintained its integrity, but the information is not really available readily on a timely basis to the use. Users. Then finally, kind of like general controls and application controls become very important in a black gen environment, just like they would do in, uh, in any other environment. Maybe just a word on cryptology. I mean, cryptology is robust for now, but with new quantum computing coming up, I mean, you can begin to, we can see that in a few, few years' time that you might be able to begin to crack the code in cryptology. So it's something I'm saying is not an issue now, but it's something which has to be monitored that you can continue to be vigilant about these type of issues to, they may impact your environment adversely. And I think there's so much hype around blockchain technology at this point. I think some part of the question for me is, will we live up to that hype? And I, I don't know what the answer is to that. But I, but, I, but I do see that somewhere in the future there's going to be something, if it's blockchain or something like blockchain or distributed ledger technology or more of these distributed systems uh, coming into, into the fold to solve different problems. I, I, think, I think right now you're seeing, you know, with, with even like with supply chain, I think they're seeing some real value in, in that supply chain um, application. So I think, it's, it, I think it's going to be here. I don't know if it's going to look the same way. I think it's a little bit too early at this point to, to know. Um, I'm going to steer clear of the cryptocurrency uh, right. completely at this point. But from, a, from the actual, just the technology perspective, uh, I, think, I think over the, you know, over the next you know, several years, I think we're going to fi try to figure out more. And this is where, even within the federal space, we need to figure out, you know, I think our natural inclination is to centralize things and let's have a central point of, you know, for, for, of control over something. And here we're saying, like, we have a very different model where we're going to distribute. And, and, and through this distribution, I'm going to become actually more, better internal controls, better, you know, efficiency and better effectiveness. I really think the true value of, of, of something with, with a blockchain or distributed ledger technology is going to be when you actually have the network effects across several different agencies. So does this, would it make, would it make, is it cost feasible for something like the Treasury to, to implement some sort of a um, asset management tracking just for themselves? It's probably going to be better if that, that, that network is spread across several agencies and we're using the same application. But then how do you govern that? Because there, there's the way that the nodes are structured. Everybody has like these nodes, these validating nodes that have to work. So we have a lot to figure out if, if we're going to build sort of these solutions that sort of span several agencies to solve problems. What does that architecture look like? And I think that's sort of a couple of the immediate things that we're going to have to figure out if this is going to work within, within our federal environment.